Grant Cardone. He's an author, uh, well-respected, uh, well-known, uh, and uh, he's some thoughts today on a very important topic. How do you know and when do you know that you're living beyond your means? And folks, all of us have a tendency to do that. But we ought to know those signs uh, so that we don't go so far out that we hurt our credit rating, that we hurt our lifestyles. Grant Cardone, welcome to Home and Family Finance. Nice to have you here. Hey, thanks so much for having me back. I enjoyed being on your show the last time. Well, we enjoyed having you here. And on this particular topic, we're talking to a whole lot of people that tend to live be. Why do we live beyond our means, Grant? Is it because we see the good life on TV or we in the movies? But many of us, most of us, unfortunately, live beyond our means. Yeah, I think people just don't, you know, I don't know that people ever look at this. I, I, I have 17 years of schooling. There was never a course on here's some indication are indicators that you're living beyond your means. That would be a tremendous course in school <laughs> to teach somebody, hey, look, these things mean you're out of bounds, that you, you have gone over the line, and that you can't win at the game of finance business, and you can't win in economics if you're living beyond your means. Let's talk about some of the signs, some of the things that really should tell us that we are, you know, if not in trouble hitting in that way, for instance, I, I know you live, and I think, that I, I love this, you lead with something so important, savings. And you're saying, you know, if your savings won't last 12 months, you're out of bounds, right? Well, yeah. For, first of all, you know, most people are, when you come into this world, unless you were born richy rich, unless unless your papa's got all the dough, and, <laughs> and he's, a, he's a real deep pocket guy, you're living beyond your means when you're born on this on this planet. You know, if you don't have 12 months and preferably three years, three years of savings tucked away that can't be touched, can't be hurt, if you don't have that kind of longevity in the marketplace, you're probably living beyond your means. Because just in this last downturn, the average person out of work has been out of work for over 20 months. That means that they didn't have two years of savings, they're broke. So every time they go to Taco Bell, you know, living beyond your means doesn't mean you're going to a $300 meal restaurant. It means every time you spend money, you're living beyond your means. Hmm. And, and how many of us do you suppose, what percentage, if, there, if, if it's possible, of us actually live that way? Uh, I think it's a huge percentage of people that are in trouble right now. And, and if, we, if we really look at why people are in trouble, then we have to say, well, maybe they're operating with wrong information. For instance, the average financial advisor in, the, in, in America tells their clients that they need three months of savings. When I have a problem in life, I know that there's some, some information that I'm operating with that's incorrect. And for years, it's been three months. Actually, since the Great Depression, the financial advi advice to America has been have three months of savings. The reason why is because after the Great Depression, people were out of work an average of 90 days. So the financial advisor came up and said, look, let's get three months of savings. You don't want three months. You want at least 10 times that would be the perfect balance, 30 months or 36 months. Because then I can that, – that, that's how rich people get really rich. They, they have money. When things are difficult, they can actually go out and buy things because they've saved and disciplined mm -hmm. for such a long period of time mm -hmm. that, that they can weather any storm. It makes perfect sense, and I, I suspect that if we had started making people realize that years ago, it wouldn't seem so harsh and so strange. But you're right. I mean, three months is barely – you're barely able to – uh, uh, to, to, you know, to save yourself if something else happens. And I, I noted also... Yeah, yeah, yeah Paul. And, go ahead. You know, if you woke up with a rash on your arm or you had blood in your urine, okay, you would be like, oh, my God, emergency. Well, these, this is why people need to know the indicators. Look, if you, if, you, if you buy a house, and the only way you can afford the house is the real estate agent and the bank, the lender, uh, show you a 30-month term. And the only way that house is affordable on, on, uh, to you is because it's 30 months? 30 years, you mean. 30, 30, beyond, 30 years. Uh, thir thir 30 years. Yeah, yeah, sorry about that. 30 years. If, you, if the only way you can afford the payment is because it's 30 years or 40 years, you're living beyond your means. You're you can't afford the house. You, afford. It makes perfect exactly. sense. Hold on a minute. we got to stop and take a break. I mean, your, your point is so well taken. If you stop and think about it, or you want a new house, well, you got 30 years to pay for it. It means you can't afford a house. We're talking with Grant Cardone. Uh, his, his topic, you are living beyond your means if certain signs show up. We'll be back with more from Grant. Stay with us. 
helping you be safe, smart, and secure with your finances. Welcome back to Home and Family Finance and Paul Berry. And of course, my guest, Grant Cordone, a well-known author, and today he's talking about signs that you are living beyond your means. Your savings, he says, ought to be at least for 30 months or 36 months. He says your house payment, if you if you can only afford a house because uh, you, you you need to stretch the payment out over 30 or 40 years, pretty good sign that you, you, you're you living beyond your means. But the thing I also like about this, Grant, is the next one, vacationing on credit. That is pretty obvious, isn't it? Yeah, look, you, if you're going on... You know, first of all, I'll I'll just tell you, Lazy Boy stock is up today, and I was wondering why it's up, and I I, I think it's because there's so many people that are lazy. (laughs) And, and, you know, vacations, people take way more vacations than they they admit to. Like, every weekend Mm -hmm. vacation. Like, you you got to really look at, when you're going to dinner, even in your hometown, it's Saturday night, you're taking everybody out, and you're going to have beer and watch the game. That is a bit of a vacation that people end up spending $80 on, $160 on. It's not in their budget. You're putting it on a credit card. The only people that win in that deal is Visa and MasterCard. <laughs> Absolutely. And speaking of Visa. If you're, ha- if, you're having, if you're having to fund those type of activities, not just a cruise, or a trip to Mexico, of course it would be that as well. But if you're having to fund vacations or, you know, free time, recreational time on a credit card, you're living beyond your means. And just admit it. What if you had to wear a T-shirt everywhere you went that said, I am living beyond my means. I am a financial train wreck. <laughs> That might be a good thing for people. It might be. And the other thing you pointed about, how many of us have paid overdraft fees in the last 12 months? This is a real waste of money, and I mean 36 bucks. And I'm guilty. My my son uh, spent $6, and he had didn't have it in his account, and they charged him $36 because they paid for a $6 charge. This is absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, and it's, it's, you can blame the banks if you want to. You could say the banks are ripping you off and everything, but the truth is, in this case, you overspent what the that you had in the bank. I mean, you violated a principle. You went out of bounds. You know, you, the, the, the referee needs to throw the red flag and let you know, dude, you're, this is a penalty, and it's unnecessary. People need, you know, people say they want money, and then they treat money like they don't want it. <laughs> So it's very important that a person knows what the indicators are that you're living beyond your means, just like you would want to know that any other problems that you have in your life, medical problems or when you get with a partner. Look, when you get with a partner, wouldn't you want to know their finances? Of course. I don't want to get with a girl that's got a credit score under 400 or she's late on her payments or she's, she's, she's filed bankruptcy and that, that was her solution. If so, I need, I need, if I love that person, then what I would really do is sit down with them and figure out, hey, what's going on in your life that, that this problem is, is following you around? You know, that's just going to affect the relationship. That's such a valuable point that you make because we do partner up. And very often, Grant, when we, and we're talking with Grant Cardone, author and a well known uh, financial guru who can talk to you folks directly. You partner up with someone who has a bad credit history or who has bad credit habits. Uh, that's not easy to change, and you ought to know that before you get involved personally and, 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 and you know, involve your finances. You, you know, if you were getting into business with somebody, you'd check out their credit score, you'd check out their financial history, you'd run a criminal report on them. You'd want to know who you're getting in business with. There's no business more complicated and more important than than two human beings getting together. Well, I think people just don't recognize, as you say, either they don't want to, or they don't, or, or they don't know how to recognize these signs. Uh, and 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 all of these are very uh, uh, very important because they really tell you if you're living well be way beyond your means. That's right. Exceeding credit limits. Well, Driving what? a two door convertible. That's your only car. Okay. Paying, paying someone else to mow your lawn, and you could be mowing it yourself, but you're not. You're sitting around watching a game walk, and you don't have the money to do it. Look, all those are indicators that you're living beyond your means. And I'm happy to get a list of, of for the whole, the entire article for your audience to read if you'd like. How can they find get more information from you on this? Where, where, where would they have to go to get information? Uh, they can go to grantcardone.com, and, and or they could call my office at 800 368 
5771. 800-368-5771. I'm happy to get him a copy of the article. Well, the last one I like, Grant, if I might, is this one. If so-and-so can do it, I should be able to, or everyone else borrows money to do these things, or I deserve it, I work so hard, or this is what I work for. <laughs> and the smack daddies, you see, yeah. we are already so far in debt, what's a little more? Those are killers, aren't they? Yeah, these, these are people committing financial suicide now. At this point, they're like, oh, well, Bob did it. Bob, Bob went and bought an Xbox machine, or, you know, little Johnny, he's got a phone, so I need a phone. Look, folks. If the guy jumped mm. off a bridge, does that mean you would? <laughs> you got to know. You have to know what your financial capabilities are, what your <clears throat> limits are, how much money you have. Live beyond. Live within your means, so that one day you can do whatever you want financially. Well, I I don't think anybody can see it any better, Grant. And I want you to come. But the advice you give us is great advice, and it is advice that people should hear. And I and I want to thank you very much for for taking the time. Uh, you make hey, it you make it plain and that. simple. One interview at a time. <laughs> Come back soon, Grant, and talk to us more about just common sense issues. And we appreciate you being with us.